Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on understanding and calculating power after a 2A ANOVA in SPSS. As always, if you find this video to be helpful, please like it and subscribe to my channel. I certainly appreciate it. I have here in the data editor in SPSS fictitious data that I'll be using for this example, and I have four variables. My first variable is an ID variable. This goes from record 1001 to 1045. So I have 45 records here. Then I have two independent variables. And I'll be using these as independent variables in the two-way ANOVA. Two-way ANOVA or two-factor ANOVA means that you have two independent variables. The first independent variable program has three levels. Individual counseling, group counseling, and treatment as usual and the second independent variable status has two levels voluntary and involuntary and then I have this one dependent variable measured at the continuous level named symptoms SPSS refers to continuous variables as scale variables so to understand the concept of power I'm going to start by describing how we relate these data and the 2A ANOVA to the null hypothesis so we can think about the null hypothesis as there is no difference. So that means there's no difference between the levels of the independent variable program as measured on this dependent variable symptoms. So no difference between individual and group, individual and treatment as usual, or group and treatment as usual. No difference between the levels on the status variable, so no difference between voluntary and involuntary and no interaction effect. That's program time status. So no difference when looking at the interaction effect between the two factors. Then we have to consider how our findings relate to the truth. So in reality, there is a difference on one of these independent variables and or the interaction effect, or there's not. So in truth, you have a difference or you don't have a difference. Then you have the outcome of the statistic, which is a probability value. And typically in the social sciences, we use an alpha level of 0.05. So a probability value lower than 0.05, we would reject the null hypothesis. So we would find that there is a difference with a probability value less than 0.05. So if we find that there is a difference and there actually is a difference in reality. That's known as a true positive. That's when we reject the null hypothesis when the null hypothesis is in fact false, when we should be rejecting it. If the null hypothesis is in reality true and we fail to reject it, that's known as a true negative. So our result from the statistic matches what's true. In that case, we would have a p-value greater than the alpha value, so a probability value greater than 5%. So with true positive and true negative, in both of those cases, the result of the statistic, our interpretation of that result, matches what happens in reality. The two other possible outcomes, other than true positive and true negative, are the false positive and false negative. If we have a false positive, we're saying the difference exists when no difference does exist. So we're rejecting the null hypothesis when in fact the null hypothesis is true. And with a false negative, here we have a false null hypothesis, meaning there is a difference, and we say there's no difference. So now we have a framework to understand power. Power is the probability that we will reject the null hypothesis when, in reality, the null hypothesis is false. So it is the probability of finding a true positive. So it's the probability that we will detect a difference that is actually there. So to calculate power, otherwise known as statistical power, I'm going to go to analyze general linear model and univariate. And I want to set this up for two-way ANOVA, so program 
and status will both move to the fixed factor list box. And symptoms, that'll be the dependent variable. Under options, I'm going to check off descriptive statistics, estimates of effect size, observed power, and I'm also going to check off homogeneity tests here. Click continue, and I'm going to make no other changes. Click OK. Here we have the output from the 2A ANOVA. And you can see we're starting here with the between subjects factors table. And we have equal sample sizes here for the program independent variable, not for the status. Then we have the descriptive statistics. And moving down, we have Levine's test of equality of error variances. So this is a test of homogeneity of variance. We have a non-statistically significant finding, which is what we would want here for 2A ANOVA. And then we have the tests of between subjects effects. And here we're looking at just three of these rows. Program, and that has a p-value of 0 0.07 and an effect size of 0.128. Now this effect size is based on the sample. And then we have the observed power, the statistical power of 0.528, or 52.8% chance that we will detect a difference if it's really there. Now I'm going to move back here to this effect size for a moment. The power is based on the sample size, the significance level, the p-value, and the effect size for the population, so the true effect size. So this observed power statistic is only going to be the true power when you have an effect size for the sample that's identical to the effect size for the population. And we would think that would not happen very often. So we have to be a little skeptical in terms of interpreting observed power because we do not know oftentimes what the effect size is for the population, what the true effect size is. So these values are for the program independent variable. We'll look at status. We have a p-value of 0.1 08. We have this effect size 0 0.065 and observed power of 0 0.361 and then the interaction effect program time status a statistically significant finding here 0 0.014 is less than 0 0.05 partial eta squared 0.197 effect size and power of 0.764. Now I mentioned before the concepts of true positive true negative false positive and false negative. So a false positive is also known as an alpha error, a type 1 error. And we set that when we set the alpha value. So in this case, the percentage chance of a false positive of a type 1 error would be 5%. We set the alpha at 5%. The false negative is known as a beta error or type 2 error. And power is equal to 1 minus beta. So in this example here where we have 0.764 as power, we can also calculate the percentage chance of making a beta error. And it would be 0.236. 1 minus 0.764 is 0.236. Or a 23.6% chance of having a false negative. I hope you found this video on understanding and calculating power after 2A NOVA and SPSS to be helpful. Thanks for watching.